thank you very much uh, for inviting me to uh, uh, such a wonderful meeting. Thank you, Poan. Uh, it's a it's a great honor for me. Uh, my disclosure is like this. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, cavernous uh, anatomy and uh, advanced cavernous approach to a post post aneurysm. The, the landmark of cavernous anatomy is like this. Uh, meaning of the band, super of the fissure, three, four, V1 and uh, six nerve, and uh, uh, lateral and the medial edge of antithyroid process to, uh, uh, we can understand the proximal ring and the distal ring. This uh, structure is a uh, uh, foyer. Foyer is this structure. And uh, a forearm and rotunda, uh, which, is, uh, which has a V2 of the trigeminal, node, and the anterior triangle, from an ovary, V3, and uh, uh, we should understand the lateral loop. And from a spinosum for middle meningeal artery and the venous sinus and the glass cup and the coalesces triangle. Uh, this is a picture from Professor Fukushima's textbook. Uh, uh, this is a, a very famous uh, picture in the anatomy of cavernous sinus. And uh, uh, this is an illustration drawn by my colleague, uh, Cosmo Noda, uh, he, he do very well the middle fossa dissection like this. Uh, we can recognize the uh, Glasgow triangle right here. And uh, medial to uh, GSPN, uh, we can uh, find the uh, uh, Kawase triangle. Uh, this is a very important anatomy to, to understand the middle fossa anatomy. But first, uh, I'll show you a brief uh, description of of the antikinal. I mean, this is a CT angel uh, up, upward view uh, to see the antikinal process. Here's the apex, and the medial edge of the antikinal process indicates the distal drawing is right here, and the lateral edge of the pro process uh, indicates the proximal ring. And uh, this is an actual view of the interoperative finding. Uh, after elevating dura propria from a supraoptal fissure, exposing antiprimal process lateral edge, and the V1 and the V2 from and rotund right here, and the ultra motor uh, should be here. And uh, after antiprimal ectomy, we can uh, skeletonize the uh, uh, optic now uh, by skeletonizing the optic roof and antiprimal, ma making the hole inside antiprimal process. And uh, uh, after taking out the antifinal process, uh, we can open the optic sheath to decompress the optic nerve if the optic nerve is elevated by the big uh, inner something. And uh, this recorded can be secured, and uh, you can find the approximate ring right here. And this other ring is uh, just uh, uh, part of inferior wall of optic sheath. Uh, I'll show you an actual case of uh, antifinal. Uh, Trinoidectomy, 66 year old right side uh, of time aneurysm, small one. Uh, this is a right front temporal craniotomy. After the craniotomy, the, the you can start in like the uh, optal uh, orbit like this, and then uh, you can inside the super optal fissure. And uh, with a meticulous hemostasis and exposing the uh, cavernous lateral wall. You can recognize the V1s. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, by uh, cutting the uh, main water band, you can export the uh, lateral edge of antiprimal process. Then uh, we can go to a, a during of antiprimal process, making a hollow inside of antiprimal process and exposing the, the, the optic knob. And uh, uh, gradually, the, you can skeletonize the c carotid. Uh, recognizing all promoter nerve and the proximal ring. Then a tip of antiprimal process could be detached from the uh, siphon of the uh, internal carotid artery. And uh, uh, by incising the frontal dura toward the uh, uh, optic sheath, uh, you can find the distal dura ring is attaching at uh, the CT junction. By uh, uh, opening the uh, carotid ultramotor membrane like this, uh, we have a, a venous breathing from a terminal sign. You can get a, a control with a surgical cell or gel form like this. Then uh, you can open the optic sheath. Now, uh, 
if uh, we can expose the uh, C to Proxima segment, exposing a, a ophthalmic artery and uh, media to ophthalmic artery, uh, I am confirming the uh, distal in media part. Then uh, uh, here, this is a remain, remaining optic strap, uh, just under the optic uh, ophthalmic artery, the slippery part of the distal drawing can be inside towards the uh, media part of the distal drawing. Now, uh, all the, uh, almost pre uh, preparation could be done. Then uh, you can approach to the aneurysm. The, the tiny aneurysm at the ophthalmic origin could be found. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I couldn't realize in a fully operative angiogram. Anyway, uh, this is a remaining flap of the distal drawing. Uh, this can be uh, uh, detected from the carotid wall with a sharp dissection. And now we can confirm the, uh, the anatomy, distal drawing, proximaring. The relationship of, of anatomy is very important. Then uh, I am trying to do a, a test temporary clipping of the uh, uh, CC carotid. And then uh, reduce the tension of the aneurysm. Uh, you can perform the uh, neck clipping safely. And uh, uh, additionally, uh, tiny aneurysm or term aneurysm could be clipped. This is a uh, uh, anticlinoidectomy and uh, paracrinoid aneurysm clipping. Uh, post operatively, nothing happened. Uh, so uh, next, uh, I'll show you a transcarbon support to a basal aneurysm. We can extend the, the uh, retrocarotid triangle inferiorly, mainly in the transcarbonous approach. Lower limit of this approach uh, is uh, IPA. And uh, we can mobilize the uh, ultramotor nerve by the releasing uh, ultramotor foramen and by freeing cavernous segment of, of ultramotor nerve. Uh, this is a drawing of the uh, transcavernous approach drawn by my colleague Cosimo Noda. Uh, in this approach, uh, we can confirm all, all, all these uh, important landmarks, especially in this approach, we can uh, free the ultramotor seg uh, cavernous segment, the ultramotor foramen, and then uh, you, uh, we can mobilize the ultramotor nerve to reduce uh, adding tension during manipulation of the aneurysm and to, we can uh, uh, prevent the uh, ultramotor narcosis. Uh, I'll show you an actual case. This is a thrombos giant visual SCA aneurysm uh, symptomatic. No. Patient came uh, to me uh, with uh, ataxia and ultramotor narcosis. Uh, in this case, uh, I have already prepared the uh, uh, superficial temporality to do a SPA P2 bypass. Uh, in case of a, a accidental PCA occlusion after neck clipping something. And uh, this is the trans Libyan route, anti-temporal route. Uh, I am confirming the origin of a uh, and uh, uh, neck of aneurysm and contralateral P1. And uh, this is the ipsilateral super cerebral artery and that uh, uh, contralateral P1 is occluded, basilar trunk is uh, occluded under the ultramotor nerve. And that this is the right P2. And that now I am dissecting distal neck between uh, uh, P1 and aneurysm. And uh, uh, there is, uh, I could make the space to put the clip at the neck. And after detaching, uh, de removing the uh, temporary clip, the supracerebral artery was occluded by the first clip on the neck. So the, I put the second clip distal to the first clip. Then uh, I could get a uh, frequency of a supracerebral artery. But uh, unfortunately, the Doppler sound of a supracerebral artery was a bit weak before neck clipping. So uh, I decided to perform the additional superior cerebral artery bypass uh, through the uh, uh, transfigurant loop like this, just above the uh, open, uh, just the uh, internet to open open up.
The IC green shows a, a very good frequency of a both bypass and a good obliteration of uh, aneurysm. Fortunately, this patient, nothing happened, no ischemic complications, discharged well. Uh, uh, next case, 77 year old female, uh, right side basal SCA aneurysm. Right P1 is a very hypoplastic. This is a right front temporal craniotomy, optical specialization. Then uh, uh, I opened the uh, uh, dura and uh, I am trying to separate the cerebellum tissue from distally to proximo. Uh, now uh, I am exposing uh, an MC bifurcation at the M2 segment. And uh, uh, I am at, uh, approaching to a, a carotid system. This is an internal carotid artery C1 segment, a C1 and a, a temporal uncus. You can see it, and the corridor artery was detected from the temporal uncus, and that is the origin of P1. And the cisternal segment, of ultramotor nerve, uh, is coming into a cavernous sinus. And uh, this is a temporal uncus. Uh, which, is, which was attached to ultramotor and the veins. And uh, now I am opening the ambient system, the entry of the ambient system. Now uh, P2, P2A and uh, P form is uh, exposed. Here, uh, at this moment, uh, we can confirm the aneurysm just under the ultramotor nerve. Very small P1 is just to distal to the aneurysm. Uh, this is a contralateral P1, uh, contralateral ultramotor just below the contralateral P1. And uh, uh, I am confirming the distal neck because there is a, a small uh, perforating arteries arising from uh, very proximal of a uh, tiny P1. I am dissecting the uh, uh, connective tissue between uh, aneurysm and the tiny perforator. Now uh, I am uh, uh, securing the uh, basal trunk to put the temporal trip. But uh, the operative field was too narrow to trip the aneurysm. So I decided to ex extend the uh, operative field uh, to perform the uh, transcavernous approach. Now, the dura propria is elevated, ultramotor nerve foramen is open, cavernous segment of ultramotor nerve is detached from the cavernous sinus wall. Then uh, we could make the uh, sufficient space to put the temperature to a, a digital trunk. And uh, I'm trying to do a neck clipping not to occlude the uh, very tiny perforator at the uh, ipsilateral P1 and the perforators uh, just uh, behind the aneurysm. Uh, I am confirming whether no perforator is tight uh, or not. Unfortunately, the small perforator behind the aneurysm is uh, uh, occluded by the first grade, so I am a bit uh, pull out the tip of the bay to keep maintain the patency of the, the, the tiny property behind the inner. Now, uh, with the uh, very highest magnification, you can confirm the uh, patency of a small property like this. Uh, this is a very important. Uh, to see uh, with the highest magnification, we need the sufficient bloodless operative field. Uh, so the transcavernous approach uh, for such a situation uh, was very uh, effective to achieve the uh, satisfied result. And the IC green shows a, a good preservation of all the important vessels. It's rather a P1, tiny perforators behind the aneurysm like this. And of course, basal trunk, the cerebra, everything uh, could be preserved. Now, the open, the cavernous seg segment of ultramotor nerve is covered by uh, the dura propria and it calls uh, the dura propria not to uh, squeeze the ultramotor nerve. 
Now, uh, the CT angel shows a good frequency uh, of the visual trunk and the PCA and the SCA, and the no high signal appears after surgery in diffusion image. Uh, this is another case, 55 year old unraptured, uh, unraptured ICA aneurysm. This is a right side approach. Already the uh, dura purpura is elevated, anterior triangle is exposed, and the anticlinal process is exposed. And uh, uh, you can confirm the, uh, the cisternal segment of ultramotor and the postma. Between third and the fourth, the lidicus membrane could be the insides and the supracerebral artery is exposed. And uh, uh, the thick lidicus membrane is, uh, is cut. And uh, I am extending the, uh, the uh, operative field by uh, incising the uh, dura mater between the third and the fourth and the partially open the cavernous sinus and ultramotor is uh, free. Uh, and then I could put the temperature to a uh, uh, basal tank, talking about basal tank, and the uh, aneurysm uh, treatment could be done safely. I see green shows a, a good preservation of ICA. This is a final view. And the CT angel shows a good uh of the aneurysm. Uh, this is a 72-year-old female, uh, basal top aneurysm. Uh, the, the relatively high position. The post uh, term operating artery is attaching so much uh, to the right side aneurysm dome. Uh, it could be uh, recognized on the CT angel. In this case, uh, I performed the epidural uh, transcavernous approach uh, by uh, exposing a third, fourth, and a V1. And uh, in the subdural space, uh, I, I could extract the uh, temporal interest posteriorly like this. And now uh, I am securing a retrofertile space. Now the annual could be exposed. The right posterior, temporal, uh, posterior time operating is stretched, uh, attaching on the dome, and the uh, cavernous segment of all motor nerve is free. And uh, other type of uh, uh, should be cut in this case, not to, uh, not to injure during the non-traditional aneurysm. Now, the, you can put the temperature to a beige trunk. And uh, I am trying to detach the postal trunk operating artery on the neck to make the space to put a clip on the neck. The contralateral P1 and the SCA is occluded. And uh, 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 still I am trying to detect the uh, posterior term operating artery from the dome. The adhesion was very strong. At this moment, after uh, 15 minutes of temporary trip to the basal, MEP disappeared. So uh, I uh, deflowed the uh, basal artery again. And uh, uh, 15 minutes later, again, I, I tried to occlude the abasia. And the contralateral P1 and uh, uh, SCA is occluded, and the uh, ipsilateral uh, SCA is occluded. Only ipsilateral P1 is open. And uh, uh, by after, after the dissection of the operator, I could make the space to put the clip. And uh, I am trying to throw the uh, inner. In this case, uh, I am pulling the uh, 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 dome by uh, micro forceps, not to uh, escape the, the annual during uh, clipping. And the IC green shows uh, uh, all the preservation of the uh, operators, the CT angel, and the uh, MRI scan shows a uh, uh, good uh, condition of the brain. Uh, finally, uh, uh, in the last, I'll show you middle force anatomy. Uh, this is a, a middle force elevation. And uh, uh, we must understand the, uh, uh, this anatomy, the Graskov triangle, definition of Graskov and the Kawase triangle. 
and uh, Tempa Romboy, V3, GSPN, Arcade, MNSP, Plus Stage. The Tempa Romboy is very important. And the IAC should be, a, should be a skeletonized uh, at the 60 degree in each side. And after during the uh, Tempa Romboy, the exposing the internal auditory canal, uh, we can recognize uh, the uh, uh, this anatomy. Uh, this is a very important anatomy. In uh, uh, anteropetrosectomy, temporal rhomboid during, we can secure the operative field between uh, B3 and uh, uh, pepper number 8 complex. Uh, in the middle of the skull based anatomy, this is uh, not an aneurysm case, but uh, this is a good example to understand the uh, middle of the anatomy. Uh, that this is a left side front to temporal parietal deep to craniotomy uh, to do a, a cholesteatoma in the middle ear. After the, the complete hemostasis, epidural space, uh, this is the optical skeletonization to expose the super optical fissure to elevate the dura propria. And uh, I am confirming the foramen uh, uh, docundum to the optical fissure. The dura is elevated from cavernous sinus gradually. And uh, this is the uh, foramen spinosum, the middle meningeal and the middle meningeal sinus is uh, uh, quadrated and cut. And uh, uh, you can recognize from ovary, the V3 is right there. The spinosum is cut with uh, the bone wax. And uh, here, this is the front and ovary. The dura propria can be inside. And uh, between the V3 and the V2, uh, you can uh, expose the uh, lateral root. The venous breathing pump, always venous breathing pump from the cavernous, post the cavernous. Uh, we need to get a complete hemostasis in every step. Uh, gradually, uh, you can elevate the uh, middle of uh, uh, dura. The uh, oozing ram of uh, detached uh, exposed bone is uh, very messy. So the complete hemostasis is necessary. And uh, here is a uh, lesser petrosa nerve, uh, which was uh, originated from a genetic ganglion. As well, here is the GSPN. Uh, you can find it, find it uh, with a uh, nerve stimulator uh, with uh, getting the uh, response of the patient nerve. And the uh, GSPN uh, could be preserved by a gentle elevation of a dual propria in order to expose the uh, uh, temporal rhomboid media to a GSPN. Uh, simultaneously, uh, you can expose the posterior border of a V3. Now, the temporal rhomboid could be exposed. Lesser and the GSPN could be exposed. And then uh, we can recognize here is the temporal rhomboid after elevation of the uh, middle procedure. Between a lesser and the GSPN, uh, you can find that C6 parotid covered by very thin bone. Here, this is a temporal rhomboid, P cross H, posterior border of B3, GSP, and RKTMS. Uh, these landmarks marks makes the uh, temporal rhomboid. Then, anteromedial corner can be a start point of a uh, uh, temporal rhomboid during because the just under the GSPN. There is a C6 internal cautet, so uh, that we have to be careful not to injure the C6 cautet during a temporal rhomboid. In conclusion, bloodless exposure, complete hemostasis in every step is important. Comprehension of cavernous anatomy, uh, we, we need to understand the, uh, all the landmark, uh, for example, onto cavernous. Uh, in cameras, uh, optic now, anti final process, optic strut, ultramotor membrane, uh, cultural ultramotor membrane, proximal ring, distal door ring, diaphragm cellar, ultramotor foramen, posterior uh, trinal process, uh, 
I talk of ramen, uh, of the band, many of the band, super of the feature, ramen between them. In the post cavernous, uh, we need to understand the ramen and over as spinos and GSPN, internal cultural system, median nerve, median canal, genitalia glandular, best of the total nerve, uh, portal border of BP, uh, maker case, maker tape, P plus H, internal auditory canal, cochlear, uh, trigeminal, uh, uh, and uh, uh, petals, uh, petal stimulus ligament. Uh, these are the very important anatomy to understand. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention.